Assalamu alaikum. Peace and blessings of God be upon you. Today I'm going to talk about halal pensions. Pensions is a subject which affects a lot of people now, especially since the introduction of the compulsory workplace schemes in the UK. So if you're a working adult in the UK, pretty much you'll be affected by pensions. And it is the prime way of saving in the UK now. So really, I want to talk about halal pensions. Uh, you know, as a Muslim, you'll be concerned to see whether your pension is halal or not. And there are a number of features that you need to be aware of, of a pension, to understand whether it's uh, halal or not. So today I'm just going to go through some of those features. There are essentially, there are essentially two types of pensions. One is what they call a defined contribution scheme, and one is a final salary scheme. For the purposes of this particular video, I'm going to talk about defined contribution schemes. Final salary schemes do affect a number of people, such as those working in the NHS. And in terms of the Sharia rules pertaining to those schemes, uh, they are different. Um, not so much more complicated, but it does deserve a different uh, topic or a different session on its own right. So today, the vast majority of people are, have a defined contribution scheme. A defined contribution scheme is one where you, inv you put money into a pension, and the money gets invested and what you get out from the pension is very much dependent on how much those investments that you uh, uh, have got in your pension grow by etc. Uh, so that's how a defined contribution scheme essentially works. And from a perspective of Sharia compliance there are five things that you need to consider whether it's to see whether your pension is halal or not. The first thing to say a pension in terms of let's demystify the term. A pension is just what they call a tax wrapper. It's a specific vehicle which has its own rules in legislation and was designed to be a vehicle for people to help them retire, save for retirement. Um, and it has its own rules in terms of tax benefits, etc. In terms of what's within that vehicle, the most important thing is really where the money is invested. And from a Sharia compliant point of view, it's important that you try to understand where the money is invested and is it Sharia compliant or not? Are those investments halal or not? And this is the first thing to look at. Um, for those of you in a workplace pension, uh, there will usually be a Sharia compliant option. Alhamdulillah, that's something uh, that's very much uh, in the mindset of most employers. And indeed, the government backed scheme, the NEST scheme, has a Sharia compliant option as well. So that's the first thing to look at. The second thing that uh, you should look at is, uh, is there any interest being accrued on any cash in the pension? Often a pension, especially a personal pension, will have cash sitting in a bank account. And if that bank account isn't Sharia compliant or non-interest bearing, you will have interest being accrued in your pension, which obviously is not Sharia compliant. The third thing is, how will, be, how will you draw down your pension when you actually can get access to it? For most types of pension scheme, the earliest you can get access to your pension is at the age of 55. And at that point, you have a number of options that, you will, be, uh, that will be made clear to you. Uh, one of those uh, very mainstream options is what they call an annuity. And uh, there are other options such as drawdown and flexible drawdown. It's suffice to say at this stage, and I'll talk a little bit more about this, but in terms of annuity, it is regarded as non-Sharia compliant. Basically, the third, fourth thing is, is you need to understand how the pension will be distributed on the death of the pension holder. Uh, in the Sharia, there are specific rules pertaining to inheritance, ta inter inheritance law, and you have to make sure that the, you are stipulated the beneficiaries of that pension to be in line with the Sharia law. And the fifth thing is the zakat due on pensions. Now, uh, whilst uh, this is a very much a, a talked about topic uh, amongst uh, Muslim professionals and others today, and that is, whilst you may not be able to get access to your pension to the age of 55, the mainstream ruling uh, given on pensions by the National Zakat Foundation uh, and others is that zakat is still due on your pension even though you can't get access to it till the age of 55 uh, and there's a whole paper written on this on the National Zakat Foundation website which you may want to consult. So those are the five things that you need to look out for 
And uh, so when, when you have a look at your pensions, uh, do consider these things. Now, let's just consider uh, how you can achieve uh, the Sharia compliance uh, within your pensions then, based on these five things. Uh, for many of you, you'll have a workplace scheme. And uh, again, just really building on what I was just saying, uh, you need to look at these five factors. So in terms of the investment options, uh, you need to consider what investment options you've been given. And like I said, most employers, uh, even those smaller ones using the government back scheme, the NEST scheme, will have a Sharia compliant option. Uh, I think the, the slight downside on, on, on most of these schemes is that it's very limited in terms of what you've got as an option. Often it's just one fund, one equity fund, and hence in terms of diversification, it does leave a lot to be desired. But nevertheless, you do often have at least one option to invest in, uh, which is Sharia compliant. And of course, with workplace schemes, uh, whilst you are being employed by someone, uh, you will oft you'll get the benefit of the employer contributions as well. So rather than opting out of the scheme, even if you did have a limited option of a one Sharia compliant fund, for example, it's usually worth taking that option, building those funds up, uh, and at least while you're employed there, you get the benefit of that, uh, uh, that benefit. Um, now, in terms of uh, ensuring that your pension is distributed in a Sharia compliant way. Uh, there's usually something called an expression of wish form. Um, a pension is a trust structure and you have trustees who have ultimate uh, discretion on how the pension will be distributed on death. Uh, this is done really mainly for tax reasons in terms of having it structured at a discretionary uh, in a trust really. But in terms of uh, the way you, you stipulate your your wishes on upon death is that you have this expression of wish form and uh, you can put down in that how you want the uh, your pension to be distributed which you can put obviously in line with sharia in terms of calculating and paying your zakat on your pension every year this will depend on the investments that are made within the pension and at simply ethical for example we we calculate that for all our pension holders at the at every ramadan um, but National Zakat Foundation and ourselves are here, here to help you if you have any questions pertaining to that. A couple of things about the previous workplace schemes. So many of us in this day and age now will not just work for one employer over the course of our lifetime, but we will work for several employers. And when you do leave a workplace scheme, you then do have the freedom uh, to transfer that pension into a new scheme. And one of the things that we uh, are trying to make people aware of at Simply Ethical is that it usually makes sense to consolidate your previous uh, workplace and other schemes into one pension uh, and one new pension. Uh, so transferring those old pension schemes into a new pension you set up. Uh, and the benefit of doing that is that you have everything under one roof. So rather than trying to keep track of several pots, you've just got one pot to keep track of. But I think the main benefit is that with a specialist uh, Sharia compliant provider like ourselves, you can invest that money into a diversified Sharia compliant portfolio. So like I said before, you may just invest in one fund in a workplace scheme which is Sharia compliant, but with a Sharia compliant diversified portfolio with ourselves, for example, you will get access to Sukuk investments, equity investments, uh, things like gold as well, property-based investments, etc. So your portfolio will be diversified at the same time, Sharia compliant, which in the in the medium to long term should produce better performance and a higher quality portfolio for your monies to be invested in. Regarding uh, your personal pensions, many of you will have uh, personal pensions you've set up. Uh, sometimes they're often uh, they're referred to as SIPs as well, self-invested personal pensions, which are quite common now as well. Uh, so you have really two choices there in terms of achieving Sharia compliance uh, in those personal pensions. One is you can go to a specialist uh, Sharia compliant provider like ourselves. We will ensure all those five factors we talked about are taken care of uh, in terms of the pension being Sharia compliant. If you choose to go with a mainstream provider, then there is still a route to achieve Sharia compliance, but you have to effectively deal with those five things yourself. The first thing is selecting investments which are Sharia compliant. 
a lot of platforms, a lot of pensions will have some choice which are uh, funds which have been certified as Sharia compliant. It may be limited, but nevertheless, you can choose funds and investments which are Sharia compliant. So you need to do that and keep an eye on those to make sure that uh, you know they are Sharia compliant going forward. Uh, any interest that may be accrued, uh, you need to uh, be aware of and calculate every year and give that to charity to cleanse the, the pension of any interest uh, element. Uh, you need to fill in an expression of wish form uh, in a similar way as we discussed earlier, so to make sure that the distribution on death is in a Sharia compliant way. And calculate and pay your zakat on the pension every year. Again, uh, you can take guidance from the likes of National Zakat Foundation for that. And uh, when you take benefits from the pension, make sure you choose flexi access drawdown as opposed to annuity and you can achieve Sharia compliance that way. So uh, I hope you found that informative. Pensions, like I say, is a massive part of most people's uh, financial planning uh, in this day and age. Uh, they're an integral part of the way the government has designed the system to help us save for our retirement. And uh, we can achieve Sharia compliance by being aware of these five different factors and, and working to achieve them uh, either by ourselves or using a specialist provider like Simply Ethical. Thank you.